while we wait for that to wrap up, it's, uh, I'm actually up here anyway, I may as well introduce, uh, as you guys met her earlier this morning, but our esteemed leader, um, oh, there we go, okay. No, by 63 to 29%. Okay, and still some undecided, so interesting. Well, thanks very much, everyone, for, for participating in that. But anyway, our esteemed leader, Anne-Marie Slaughter. Those are actually surprising numbers. I would have higher yes than I, than I uh, actually expected. Hi, sorry. Anne-Marie, may I just have one moment? Yes. Sorry. Can you put back the first one? Okay, so that is from before the debate. 63% say no, 25% say yes. Know. Now we're going to put up the one after the debate. 68% ah. say no, 24% say yes. Great, thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Go ahead, Anne-Marie. So before I, I introduce this panel, I just have to say Peter Swire and I were Carol mates in college, and neither of us would ever have expected that we would be uh, both lawyers, yes, but both uh, uh, here at the conference on cybersecurity, at least from my point of view, no, but it was great to, to have him back. So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit now about doing cybersecurity beyond the Beltway, and this is part of a much larger initiative at New America that is called Reinventing the Think Tank. Uh, and I won't go through the whole argument, but in a nutshell, it is that if you are in the business of solving public problems, uh, it is still important to get a lot of smart people together and figure out answers and feed those answers to government. That's the think tank model. But that is not enough. Uh, and that most of the, or a great deal of the solutions to public problems are actually now coming bottom up they're coming bottom up in cities across the country. I strongly urge you to read Jim Fallow's uh, Atlantic cover for this month that is all about uh, the renewal of America that he sees across the country after uh, three years and 57,000 miles in a small plane going back and forth across the country. And New America is opening hubs in different cities across the country. You saw Megan Garcia, who's the head of New America CA. We're now prospecting in Chicago and we'll be looking uh, at other cities. Uh, and this panel is looking at cybersecurity work beyond the Beltway. It may seem like a shock uh, to many of us, even beyond New York, uh, even as far as my home state uh, of New Jersey. Uh, so uh, we are joined uh, by Ian Wallace, whom you've met, who is one of the co-directors of our cybersecurity uh, project uh, and Dave Weinstein, who is one of uh, one of our uh, Nash uh, New America Cybersecurity Fellows, but also Cybersecurity Advisor to New Jersey, which is my home state. So I'm going to listen to this with particular interest. So with that, uh, I will moderate the panel. So, Ian, now that we've established that there is cybersecurity beyond the Beltway, uh, why should we be engaged uh, in this kind of work? So I, I think, um, I mean, as part of uh, New America's cybersecurity initiative, um, we've been looking at where we can add most value. So the, the very basic answer is we feel that no one else is looking at this and that there's a, a real opportunity. Um, but the, the more substantive answer is, or two more substantive answers, one, as information systems become more and more part of our daily lives, and for anyone who heard uh, Paul Nicholas's fantastic presentation this morning, you will get a sense of what this means uh, and, and what it's going to mean going forward. Um, that means that pretty much at every level of government, um, policymakers are going to have to make decisions uh, that affect cybersecurity, that in turn affect people's lives. And um, just as um, there's beginning to be a sort of industry focusing on cybersecurity policy at the federal level, um, we see an opportunity to, to have a look at what's going on at the uh, state, uh, but also at the sort of local level. Some, some big cities and some smaller cities have some really interesting stories to tell. And then the second sort of substantive point is, you know, the, similar to uh, the same as the, the uh, rationale behind the wider Reinventing the Think Tank initiative, there's some really interesting good work which is happening at that level, including the sort of work that, that Dave is doing in, in New Jersey. 
that we want to shine a light on, understand, um, think about in the same way that think tanks you know, ought to be thinking about um, public policy issues. Great. So Dave, you've worked at both the federal level and the state level. So maybe you can just start by telling us from your point of view what the differences are. Yeah, thanks. So um, at a macro level, the public sector is not that different from a cybersecurity perspective, whether it's the federal level, the, the state level, or even the local level. Um, it's important to note that states and, and cities as well are experiencing the same level of sophisticated threats as the federal government is in many, in many respects. The so-called advanced persistent threat is present at, at the state level, it's present at the local level. We see it every day and as states are building more capacity around monitoring and threat detection, uh, that's starting to become more and more apparent. So I is think- Is it from the same people or is it just that there's the same caliber of hackers sort of wherever you are? In some respects, there's some correlation between the actual actors. Um, in some respects, there's commonalities around the tactics and the techniques they're using. And, and you know, it's a, it's a bit counterintuitive, but if you think about it, at the end of the day, they're, they're after the same thing. It's, it's a data-rich environment, whether it's state government or federal government. Uh, so when you think about the, the motivations behind the IRS hack, behind the OPM hack, and then you consider that states and localities are probably more vulnerable than uh, the federal level is, uh, if that's possible, no offense. <laughs> Um, then, then it starts to come together. Um, but I think you know, it, it's useful to organize our thinking around state and local cybersecurity in, in kind of three buckets. Uh, the first is enterprise cyber risk management. So there's a lot of focus on uh, IT security at the federal level now in the wake of OPM. Uh, these are the roles and responsibilities that fall under the CISO. Um, and states are, are taking uh, more steps to, to deal with those issues, right? Then there's the critical infrastructure protection uh, mission, which is really unique at the state and local level. Um, we organize ourselves in New Jersey along the same lines as the federal government with the, the federally designated critical infrastructure sectors, but there are over 500 assets in New Jersey that fall below that threshold of criticality for the federal government, but I can assure you as a as a New Jersey resident, the wastewater treatment plant in, Mars, in, in Mercer County, New Jersey, is, is pretty critical to the residents in the surrounding area. So uh, there's need to look at that. And then finally, um, the whole issue of privacy, and this intersects with the enter enterprise uh, security mission, is protecting the data of, uh, of citizens of, of your state or locality. That's a responsibility that, that now falls on the shoulders of uh, public officials at the local level. So I heard Tom Fanning that say this morning that you really need to think of this as physical and cyber together. And as you were talking, I was remembering a presentation by the head of the FBI for New Jersey back in 2004 at Princeton mm -hmm. about uh, you know just doing counterterrorism generally, right? So attacks on exactly those kinds of critical installations. And so as you say, you know the Mercer wastewater plant or energy plant, that could be just as easily, you know, Al-Qaeda or ISIL or any other group as it could be cyber. How closely do you work sort of with the physical side? Yeah, we, look, we work very closely with the physical side. The challenge, I think, in New Jersey and states across the nation is uh, establishing that cross-domain functionality, kind of taking a holistic look at, at risk that spans the cyber domain, the physical domain, uh, to evaluate uh, threats, vulnerabilities, and, and ultimately risk uh, to, the, to these assets. Uh, we're working closely with DHS to kind of uh, take a, a, a high level look at the risk picture. Um, but to your point, um, asset owners have been spending a lot of resources on physical security. They're all running SCADA systems as well. Um, so so we're, we're spending a lot of time actually traveling to these facilities, talking to uh, the the, uh, the control operators, talking to the IT uh, shops in these organizations and helping them establish a baseline awareness of best practices uh, and assist with implementation, which is probably the highest barrier right now. And, and so, they, they, uh, I think I'm right in saying 
There is a fair diversity across the country of how states are grappling with these issues. And so one of the things that we'll want to look at is you know, how states take the large amount of um, resources that they've received from the federal government to deal with counterterrorism over the last decade and a half, and how that relates to the challenges that they face on cybersecurity. And th there really are no right answers, but there are definitely some answers that may be better than others. Um, and there's, you know, I think David's actually doing a great job in New Jersey, but there are different models that, that, are, that are well worth considering. And, uh, you know, there are, there are definitely organizations like the National Governors Association and, and others who, who um, look at sort of uh, conversations across states, but, but not so much from a sort of public policy perspective way that a think tank would. Hmm. So, uh, actually, David, you were talking and talking about across departments and the difficulties across departments. I was thinking, oh, yes, as compared to the fully joined up government at the federal level, right. we, uh, we have these problems at the state level. Right. We you know, have them uh, everywhere. But are there specific challenges that you encounter at the state level that you don't see at the federal level? Yeah, so one of them is, and again, there's variations of this happening across the federal level, but where I think it's more pronounced at the state level, on the enterprise cybersecurity side, we are extremely federated. Um, and there is very little governance um, in multiple states around how we implement security controls, how we share information, how we respond to incidents. Uh, one area where I think state and locals uh, are really lacking, where the federal government has made a lot of progress over the last few years, is the incident response realm. You know, actually uh, responding to incidents, having a public se sector capability that can so-called put the, the cyber fire out. Uh, at the state level, that's, that's a pretty much universally non-existent capability. I think there's a lot of opportunity in the future to scale the resources of the federal government in terms of uh, having local or county or state level uh, incident response teams that can actually serve not only public sector uh, owners and operators of in infrastructure, but also uh, industry as well, small businesses, et cetera. So before, before I ask the question, where the clock is stuck up here. So is somebody telling me that, thank you. <laughs> yes, back to we can operate it manually. Actually, it works very well to hold up a little <laughs> sign saying we have five minutes. Uh, okay. This is cyber resilience in practice. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, I, I was, uh, are we going to the audience? Uh, let me, let me ask, sure, ask a question. Uh, on my way into New York every time and out of New York, going to Elizabeth and the refinery and the closeness of that refinery to Newark Airport, yeah. uh, it's always been a matter of, are, are you working with them to make sure that they can be cyber safe? Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, this is a New Jersey example, but it's obviously common across multiple states. We have a very dense infrastructure footprint and a lot of shared infrastructure. Uh, so in the case of Newark Airport, you're talking about a port, of, uh, port authority uh, asset, shared infrastructure between New York and New Jersey. Uh, we work very closely with them. And I think this, this kind of introduces the opportunity and the need at the state and local level to really partner with different organizations, whether they be national organizations uh, or local or industry-aligned organizations. We work extremely closely with the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center, which is the, the ISAC for states. The MSISAC is monitoring the networks of 40 state governments and mining that data, pooling it. Incredible value for alerting organizations uh, at the state and local level of, of emergent threats. Uh, similarly, we're partnering in the information sharing space to support organizations like the Port Authority or, or airports, for example, um, to uh, start sharing indicators of compromise, threat indicators in automated fashion. So, so doing away with kind of the manually intensive processes for sharing threat intelligence and adopting uni uh, universally recognized frameworks uh, to achieve this near real time uh, shared situational awareness of the, the cyber threat landscape. So machines talking to machines, uh, exchanging threat information that's pretty close to zero day, 
uh, and automatically integrating that into the security architecture of our partners, whether those partners be Newark Airport or the, uh, the folks who are operating the industrial control systems for the pipelines that go from Linden, New Jersey to lower Manhattan. Uh, there's a lot of goodness in, in realizing um, operational, fiscal, and technical efficiencies through some of these partnerships. The MSI SAC is one, but other vertically aligned uh, ISACs and soon to be ISOWs uh, are a great place to start, and that's, that's where we've focused our efforts. So, you know, that, that was a great example of an answer that focuses on how you can make us safer through technology, through automated, uh, you, you know, threat uh, updating all the time. What about the old-fashioned way of legislation? You know, one of the things we talk about all the time is we need to solve problems through com computer code, but legal code still has yeah. its, its role. Is there a, a project that you see of sort of, you know, model state cybersecurity yeah. legislation? Yeah, I think, I think there is. I think a big topic here around legislation, it's, it's kind of the blocking and tackling at the state level, revolves around governance, right? And what we've, what we've adopted, what we've put in practice um, in New Jersey, even in the absence of legislation, although legislation would strengthen it, um, is the integration of threat intelligence, security operations, and uh, cyber policy and compliance under a single kind of cyber risk management governance framework. Uh, and in doing so, kind of elevated, to, to use a, an overly used uh, phrase, elevated cybersecurity to the C-suite, in this case, the governor's office, uh, to, to raise awareness at that level uh, to, to ultimately uh, to, put, to put decisions into action, right? Another really interesting concept that uh, multiple states, including us, are, are experimenting with is kind of this, this uh, separation between the IT side of the house and the cyber security side of the house, right? So establishing a governance model based on risk for uh, ultimately uh, reconciling the conflicts that always arise between technology professionals and security professionals. Uh, legislation can, can really create some structure around that type of model. Um, but, but I think what we're seeing play out at the state and local level right now is, is experimental uh, practices, and, and you know, we'll see if, uh, if states start to put it into I'm and coming to law. ask you in our last question, so what's next? So in your answer to that. <laughs> so I, I'm going to follow on that and, and tell you what's next. So in addition to, to what Dave's told us about how states look after their own security, of course, states have a really important role in setting the context for everyone who lives in their states, and not just state cities as well. Um, and we're constantly uh, reminded that Tom Fanning said himself, cybersecurity is actually often something that's delivered by the private sector. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at in part of this project is sort of how states affect their wider ecosystems. And that includes sort of education, it includes workforce, Another of our programs, Opportunity at Work, is doing some great uh, work around the country to support the White House's Tech Hire Initiative, which has a, a, a cybersecurity aspect to it. And, and there are other people out in the States, for example, regulators. Not many people realize that uh, insurance is regulated at the state level, and that has potentially a really big interest in, in uh, sort of driving cybersecurity. So going forward, we are going to do what think tanks do, uh, write reports, um, uh, but we also uh, intend to get out uh, in the states themselves, partly so we can see what's going on and, and shine lights, um, but also so we can take New America out into uh, the states and, and run some events. So um, as we've heard, partnership is part of what we do, um, and therefore we're very interested in hearing from uh, anybody sort of outside of DC who feels they have a good story to tell and, and wants to work with us on some of these uh, really interesting issues. Great. You, you anticipated my, my closing, yes, the, <laughs> uh, the, my closing remarks, which was uh, to everybody in this audience, but also people online, on Twitter. Uh, if you are involved in work uh, at the local, state and local level or, or accumulating that work, we do want to know about it. Uh, and uh, otherwise, I, I, I'm feeling a little better as a resident of New Jersey, although as you were talking about the governor's office, all I could think was I was in New Jersey yesterday or Monday, 
and the, the conversation all day was when Chris Christie might ever come back to the governor's office. But that was an off-the-record political comment, uh, and we will now thank uh, our, uh, our, our, our panel uh, and turn it back over to our next event. Thank you. Thank you.